Yep. Okay. Uh, welcome to Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021 SIG testing meeting. This meeting is under the CNCF code of conduct. Uh, the short version of that is be excellent to each other. This meeting will, will be recorded and uploaded to YouTube or is being recorded. Uh, first up, we have uh, Prow Secrets automatically synced from Secret Manager. Uh, Chow, do you want to go talk about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, same thing, I cannot share. Can you grant me the... Are you on it? You should have it now. Yes. Can you guys see it now? Yes. Cool. So, uh, so this was a uh, proposal based on top of a doc that uh, Aaron wrote, uh, but uh, didn't share. So the problem we want to solve here is uh, to be specific. The problem I wanted to solve is for pro on call. Uh, there were two problems that we encounter where, where, while we are doing pro on call. One of them is um, we have, there are several pro components need to access a secret, which is kubeconfig. Uh, it's a very um, powerful secret that if you have the cube config secret, you can basically uh, access and modify everything in that cluster. So uh, we kind of need to handle that very carefully, uh, but the current process is super secure in a way that uh, the pro clients team transfer the kubeconfig secret normally on Slack via plain text. And the pro on call would take that secret screen and apply onto pro cluster so that pro can uh, schedule paths on that build cluster. Uh, so this is kind of troublesome. First is not secure. The other is uh, it's a toil for on call. And also there is a tenant runtime because you need to be client and uncalled to be both online to do this kind of transaction. Uh, also, there are times when we need to prune that secret. It's also pretty tough because it's more like in place, in line deletion of a YAML file and uh, manually applying back to the cluster, which is also uh, error prone. And uh, there are so many times when I was on call, I wish there's a way we can uh, have a better backup than that secret, because it's uh, when the secret in the cluster is deleted, it's gone forever. There's no way we can get it back. So the solution, proposed here is we have a one-way pro secret sync from, uh, in this title, I'm mentioning Google Secret Manager because that's how we want it to do in Google internal pro. But uh, this uh, proposal actually work with every secret manager, not every, uh, with most of the major secret manager, including uh, GCP, Azure, and AWS. So uh, I'll briefly touch what is it. So the solution proposed here is called Kubernetes External Secret. It uh, composed of CRPs of uh, external secret and a controller which reconcile the secret, the external secret, and the sync, the external secret object to a secret object. So if we have things configured, or we say, if 
for example, if I have Prow cluster install Kubernetes ex external secret with CRT installed, uh, once someone add a external secret object in the cluster, uh, the controller will automatically translate this external secret to a Kubernetes secret. And the value of this secret will be derived from the config here. So for example, in this case, it's a GCP secret manager, and uh, this is a GCP project. And uh, this is the key of the GCP secret. And uh, the, uh, what's the key? Oh, the key name is, uh, is like the, this guy. So it's a data field name. And uh, their name, the GC, the uh, Kubernetes secret name would be the same as the external secret name and namespace is the same. So after, What's if we are going to go with this change, the flow will uh, become the, Oh, that's uh, not what would be transformed from sharing a secret uh, file in plain text to, to the automatically self service. Like, so, what crowd clients are, need to do is to create uh, secrets in Google Secret Manager. In a GCP project yeah. they own, uh, we have uh, quite a few discussion with Aaron in this space. Uh, so, as I mentioned, before, uh, it doesn't actually have to be GCP. Uh, it could be any major or uh, secret manager provider. So as long as the client team have access to one of the secret manager, they can create secrets in the place they own. And uh, what they need to do next is grant the Prow secret manager uh, the Prow service account permission to access the secret. Then uh, Prow clients can create a pull request in a repo where Prow cluster config is located. The uh, pull request will contain this file. And it will tell Prow where to pull the secret Prow from and uh, it will, where the secret will be created. Uh, currently, the the polling interval can be set uh, by default is every ten seconds, so it's almost like instantaneously. Well, as long uh, as this config is applied, uh, this object is applied in pro cluster. This secret will be available within ten seconds. I've tested this in the uh, proof of concept, and it worked pretty well. So uh, while thinking about the approach, one of the things we considered uh, was a controller, like a in-house tool uh, where Aaron had, uh, had an intern work done. Uh, so there are a few drawbacks as I mentioned here. So it's not, it's not completed yet. We need to have more work work to get it done. And uh, I think the biggest uh, drawback is it only supports Google Secret Manager and we need it needs more work to support other secret manager providers. So I think this is pretty much what I want to cover here. Uh, and uh, the only other thing I want to mention is that uh, the initial goal of this plan was actually supporting pro control plane primarily for the cube config secret, but uh, the same pattern could actually benefit pro build cluster for any uh, uncall that manage build, build cluster. They can adopt the same concept and uh, let clients of a pro build cluster to add their own secrets without 
needing to transfer the security in plain text. Uh, sorry, I was I wasn't paying attention to chat. Now let's chat. Oh, that was just me saying I, I shared the doc you mentioned, um, and I am super oh. uh, happy to do less work and to hand this off to you. Thank you for picking this up. Yeah, yeah, totally agreed. I actually mentioned, I, I think you joined late uh, in the beginning. I actually mentioned that it uh, started out from the doc that you wrote. And uh, yeah, so is there any question? Or do we want, who want to be the prover? Or who should be the prover for this doc? I'm happy to sign off as an approver. Or yeah, awesome. as an approver. Um, uh, I think. Uh, your call, because uh, part of uh, part of what was motivating me to, to work on this was not just secrets for Prowl, but secrets for Kubernetes clusters in general. I specifically had the AAA cluster in mind that uh, Kate's Infra is using to run things like triage parties, Slack Infra, and, and all that. So it would be probably nice to give um, Nikita a heads up as a uh, Contravex tech lead. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure, sure if it's necessary for approval or not. Yeah, uh, I'll reach out to Nikita. Uh, also, another heads up is uh, we already started piloting this on Google internal crowd, and uh, it, it's it hasn't been it's not in action yet because uh, we need to wait until the next team want to onboard crowds uh, to do this exercise. But things are already set up. We just need to check when a new team wants to onboard how efficient this system is. And uh, what would they feel? Do they really like the new process? Certainly. Uh, and I know I'm on too many things, but I'm putting my hand up to say, I think I said it in the doc too, like I want to pilot this for the Kate's and for the clusters. So I will reach out to you at some point to make sure I'm deploying sort of the same set of yes. uh, deployments and CRDs and stuff that you've uh, piloted internally. Um, and I feel like oh, those yeah, are uh, clusters. Yeah, for sure. Actually, the I I already drafted a pull request in case test infra, but uh, since uh, we need to discuss on this talk, so I didn't create a pull request. Uh, and the, the internal version of the CRD and deployment actually was just copy pasted from a draft PR. So if we are all good with this, I will just publish my PR. Yeah, go for it. That sounds great. Cool. Cool. Uh, if there is no more question, I'll stop presenting. All right. Uh, how do I stop? Hmm. I think I just can just close it. OK, thanks, Chow. Uh, anyone have any remaining comments or questions before we move to the next topic? Okay, thanks again. So uh, Alvaro has a topic about a bot account for cherry picking. I'm not sure if I see, doesn't look like he's in the call. Um, oh, uh, he actually mentioned on Slack that uh, he has something going on and he cannot present. It okay. needs to be pointed. Uh, well, that is the remainder of our scheduled topics today. Oh, uh, yeah. I, actually, he PM'd me. I thought that he mentioned that on, on a public channel. Anyways, uh, he cannot make it. Sure. 
Uh, I guess uh, while we have you here, Chow, uh, how are things going with the tech to auto deploy uh, uh I think things are going pretty well. I uh, believe I have completed all of the prerequisites asked in the uh, cap. So those include uh, capture the pod crash looping alerts that I already added uh, based on what the uh, open shift did. And uh, the other thing was uh, splitting the uh, image bump between pro images and the uh, testing images that was also done. And uh, the, the next thing was automatically posting on Slack and uh, I've cleaned the pro alerts channel good enough that I believe uh, is a good place for automatic posting. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the prerequisites we need. And uh, the, the PR for enabling that is just a, a couple of lines changed and those are up. Once the 1.21 release branch is cut, I will announce it and uh, merge the PR. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a much it's a much less noisy channel over in Power Alerts now. Um, yeah, I'm really glad that uh, I can see one alert each day that uh, remind me it's still alive, but it's not like tons of each day. Uh, I guess I have a, a, I won't keep us here too long, but uh, just sort of an update on, I know we talked a bunch last time about um, updating clone wraps or pod utils to support uh, cloning the default remote branch. And we had a working theory that maybe if I put head as the base ref, that that would just magically work. It did not. Um, so uh, when I get time, I will try to move on a, proposed solution for that. If it gets too big, I'll come at you all with a proposal. Otherwise, uh, maybe look for a proof of concept PR or something in the next week or two. Awesome. I'm curious, just since we're on this topic, I'm curious about the branches and excluded branches in proud jobs. Uh, I'm wondering if we can replace main with default, like use default or something as a placeholder for the default branch. So no more future changes would be needed if there is any branch filter. Um. The problem with that specific uh, sentinel value is, for all I know, somebody might have a branch that's called default. I know, yeah. Can we... branch. Um, <laughs> I was kind of, uh, one idea I had <clears throat> was to suggest that if you don't specify the base ref field at all, that uh, some, whichever parts of power necessary would interpret that as the default uh, branch. but. It's not clear to me whether that plays nicely with some of the assumptions that are made about that particular API right now. Uh, if it supports it, that would definitely be my preference. Um, but I'll have to take a look. I definitely know there are repos without default branch, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, we could we could support it on set or something. I, it seems like head might actually be able to work, but we'd have to come up with a scheme for the branch, the local branch naming that didn't involve just using the ref name, um, or at least had some special case for that ref name. 
because as far as I can tell, that is the main blocker right now is that if you say, I want to check out this ref, we treat it as that ref is a branch. And so we <clears throat> not only fetch it with that name, but we also try to create a local branch with that name, um, which makes sense. Uh, but that's not what you'd want here. Uh, but we also don't want to be in a detached head state. So like we could also just treat head as the sentinel value and map it to what the default branch is and check it out as the, the actual default branch name. I think the main question has just been, there's been a lot of back and forth about like what layer do you do this at? Because Prowl likes to resolve refs itself Yeah, so so whenever I come up with with uh, uh, a suggestion, I'll try and sort of articulate what I think the implications are from a, a token usage perspective, and sort of like, you know, at uh, trigger time versus run time uh, when refs are being resolved. Uh, if anybody else wants to work on this, that's totally cool too. Um, I want to make sure I'm not doing the thing where I lick the cookie. Uh, so I think it was really awesome that uh, I started noodling on the thing for secrets and Chow was like, oh, I was thinking about the same thing. Here you go. Um, so it, it's a thing like I, I really want to see happen and I'm dangerous enough to maybe know how to, to make it happen. It's just a question of my time and bandwidth. Um, so if anybody's interested, I'm totally happy to hand off. Otherwise, I will report back when I've gotten around to it. Well, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I actually think it might be a good idea to get some time back with test freeze going on. I'm not sure about the rest of you, but I am spending a very large amount of time doing reviews right now uh, to try to get all of the test things in before test freeze. Uh, it's about as bad as code freeze. <laughs> Okay, well, thanks everyone for coming. Enjoy getting your 30 minutes back and happy Tuesday. Yeah, thank you. Great to see you all. Hope you have a great week.